In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down FUBU TV for you. I'm gonna be talking about some of the risk factors for the business. I'm also gonna be talking about some of the potential catalysts for growth. Now, if you are looking for a detailed stock analysis, check out the link in the link card up above. If you haven't already watched that video, I'll also include a link in the description. So that said, let's go and talk about FUBU TV. So the first thing you need to know is that they operate through a listing on the New York Stock Exchange. They've been in operation since 2015 and they operate in the interactive media and services sector. Now they also have 220 employees and FUBU TV operates a live streaming uh, platform for live sports events, news, entertainment, and content in the United States and Europe. Now their platform allows for customers to access content through streaming devices, as well as on smart TVs, computers, mobile phones, and tablets, and the company is headquartered in New York. Now just quickly looking at the current CEO, David Gandler, he's been with the company for two years. Uh, his annual salary for last year was $470,000. He's sitting on a shareholding of 1.6%. Uh, now he has also served as an independent director at Waverly Capital, and he has been the chief executive officer and director of FUBU TV since April 2020. Now he also serves as its co-founder. Now something you may wanna know is that Gandler had a salary of $470,000 dollars last year he also had a bonus of two hundred sixty five thousand dollars and he had options awarded to him of twenty point nine million bringing his total compensation package to twenty one million six hundred ninety four thousand now looking at the top five shareholders we've got most of the institutions here everyone from Vanguard to BlackRock with Vanguard being the largest shareholder uh, sitting at seven point five nine percent with BlackRock following just behind at 6.38%. Now, as we move down and just look at the revenue breakdown, you'll see that 84% of the company's revenue is currently generated through subscriptions. An additional 11% comes through advertisements, something which the company is trying to aggressively grow. They're also getting 3.5% of their revenue from software and licensing, and then another half a percent from all the other most of which includes additional investments. Now, looking at uh, the geographic breakdown, Currently, the US brings in 100% of their revenue, and of course, this is a big area of concern, which leads me into the risk factors. One of the biggest risk factors at the moment for the business is seasonal revenues. Now, obviously, one of the things that FUBU has done is concentrated very specifically on sports. In fact, they put themselves forward as a sport first platform. And because of this, there is a seasonality aspect uh, to their revenue streams. In, in addition to, the, to which, um, they obviously are looking to aggressively attract customers, but it has been shown, especially over the last part of 2021, as the pandemic has tapered, that they may not be as successful in attracting new customers as they'd initially hoped. Now, in addition to this, like I said, they are focusing very aggressively on buy, uh, uh, growing the ad side of their business. They obviously wanna get a lot of corporate customers buying ad space, but unfortunately, they've been unable to maintain an adequate supply of ad inventory. And it is something that is showing up as a risk factor. In fact, they themselves talk about this in their company annual report, talking about the fact that they need to start finding some stability in terms of supplying ad inventory going forward. Now, this leads us into, of course, talking about some of the competitive advantages. Now, the one thing that they've done exceptionally well is that they've been improving their profitability and uh, obviously been focusing on how they advertise their business out. They've been running very lean over the last couple of quarters and they have certainly seen a huge, huge improvement in terms of the bottom line numbers in terms of those margins. Now looking at the other thing that is a competitive advantage, something I mentioned earlier, is that they have differentiated themselves in terms of a streaming platform as really offering a sports first approach. So this is where they are entirely different from somebody like Netflix, for example. They are specifically targeting live events and obviously more specifically sports. The other thing is that they have more um, channels in their base package than any other competitor by far. So this is, of course, something that a lot of consumers like. And one of the things that really does attract a lot of consumers there, besides obviously coming for those live sports events that are being streamed. Now, talking about some of the potential growth catalysts, and there are three that really stand out at the moment. First of all is that FUBU TV has uh, basically signed an access agreement with the Cleveland Cavaliers. So basically all of those um, events will be streamed with FUBU TV and that obviously could bring a great deal of customers to them. In addition to which uh, FUBU TV is to stream the UEFA soccer matches in a new deal that's been signed. And they've also acquired France's number one live streaming company, which is uh, Molotov 
SAS. And uh, this again is something that may indeed lead to become a pretty big catalyst for them in the future. With that being said, if uh, you have missed my detailed stock analysis on the company, uh, please do go and check out the link in the link card up above, as well as the description if you miss it. And then also, if you wanna download this detailed report on the company breakdown, you can go and check the link uh, description down below. Uh, I will give you access to this, where you can go and see exactly all the data that our analysts have put together, as well as, of course, all the article references where you can go and actually do some deeper research research yourself.